Hi everybody, Steven here. NSX4 came out with some really cool features, one of them being malicious IP. If you want to learn more about it, stick around. We're, that's what we're going to talk about. See you in a bit. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. Uh, why don't we jump to it? But before I do that, if this is the kind of stuff you're interested in, hit that subscribe button. It's free. It does me a lot of good. Uh, it helps bring content to the channel. So if you want to see more of this stuff, hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends about it. And let's jump into it, okay? So um, let's go here. So let me just go to home first. Now, so this new feature, if I go, I'm running 4.1 right now in my environment. Uh, so this came out in 4, uh, version 4. And if I go into, um, let's go into security, all right? When I go into security, under my security overview over here, you see a whole bunch of stuff that I've talked about in the past, uh, or most of them in the past. You'll see over here malicious IPs, right? If I click on that, it actually shows you a summary of malicious IPs. Now, let me mention something here. This is enabled by default on new NSX install. So if you get a Greenfield deployment, brand, brand new, this is enabled by default. You can turn it off if you want, and I'll show you, right? If you upgraded from a previous version, let's say you upgraded from 3.2 to 4. whatever, right? Uh, it will not, I repeat, not be enabled. You have to enable. So let's take a look at enabling it, right? So uh, I'm basically over here, I'm gonna go to my distributed firewall. And actually, before I show you enabling it, um, what does this actually do? If I look at my distributed firewall, under infrastructure, you'll see that there's a couple of rules already there. If I open this up, you'll see under infrastructure, there are some default rules here. Here's a policy called malicious IP block. You'll see malicious IP, there's two rules. Malicious IP is the source, malicious IP is the destination. If you extract this again, uh, if you're not familiar with the distributed far firewall, uh, I've got videos on that. I'll leave that in uh, links. Uh, I'll leave that at the end of the video. Uh, so you'll see in this one here, the source is this group called the uh, malicious IP. It destinations any, uh, services any. Uh, again, we're not doing any layer seven stuff here. Uh, it's applied to everybody and we're dropping that. So that's the default rule. And you'll see over here, you'll see any source. The destination is that group, that um, um, malicious IP group any service and again it's applied to everybody and it means um and we'll drop it so this is the default rules you can see the rules are enabled okay uh if i go into here into settings or sorry actions if i go down into general settings and you'll see over here in general settings there's a malicious ip feed notice it's up to, it's on automatically right so as i said new installs of nsx4 this is going to be turned on if you did an upgrade from version three to version four, this will not be turned on. You have to turn it on. Notice the update frequency is every 12 hours. That's the default. Now, um, and you see it was last updated whenever, okay? I can click on this download latest feed and it's actually gonna go download the latest feed. So you could disable this. If you don't want this going out every 12 hours for whatever reason, you could say, no, disable the auto update and then you mainly can go in and whatever, update it whenever you want type of thing. Let's hit that refresh so you see it was success. This thing has a list of about uh, 4,000 IPs last I read, okay? Um, so let's cancel this. Let's jump in. This won't be that long of a video, but let's jump into, um, again, let's go into security overview. Let's go under malicious IPs and we see a report. Now, uh, I've been doing some videos. If you watch my last video, I did URL filtering, URL analysis. I did a whole bunch of stuff on that. Um, sorry, URL filtering, fully qualified domain name analysis. And I was doing a bunch of playing and uh, obviously I've got some, some malicious IPs here. You're gonna see the top IPs that are blocked. Shows you this 104, uh, whatever, 26, 13, 88. It's been blocked 38 times. Uh, again, I could select uh, uh, this, right? And I can get more information on it if I actually select it. So this is the uh, 38 IP. Actually, it's, it's uh, color coded here, right? So if I click on this here, it comes up and shows me a little bit of information. So it's, there's the IP and it's phishing and two VMs were impacted by it, right? Um, let's uh, 
let's go back into um, oops sorry let's go back into our uh, overview here uh, malicious IPs and over here you can view it by the top VMs so you see uh, my top VM was Windows 10 right uh, surprise but anyways uh, and my other one was dev which is a Linux um, VM I'm just messing around with these I think you can even do by top category so you see most of it was phishing phishing categories I got Windows exploits right uh, I got botnets uh, and whatever it looks like I got some proxies here right um, so great you can refresh this this is not real-time information but you can actually uh, refresh it if you want again I can click on these to get more information let's click on whatever the botnet ones here right so I click on that and it's showing me the various IPs down here shows me the category that it falls into botnets or phishing oh by the way where's it get all this stuff from right I mentioned before that it, uh, it, it, it downloads well where's it get it from it gets it from NTIX N-T-I-C-S, NSX Threat Intelligent Cloud, I guess the S is service, right? So it downloads it from there. So your manager is going to need access to, to download that. Now, so right over here, I'll act, you actually see, again, uh, I'm just showing you based on botnets, and it's showing me the IPs that are blocked, right? Uh, before I show you something else here, let's go into inventory. Well, we looked at the distributed firewall, and I showed you that there was a default rule that was created with this group called, come on, come on, there we go. Default malicious IP group. So let's go into my inventory here. Let's go into um, groups and you'll actually see there's a default malicious IP group that was created. Notice the icon's a little different right over here. Okay, it's a little different. Um, now, I could modify this group if I want, and let me kind of show you that. Let's go back to security. Let's go into, um, uh, what do I want to get? Let's go back into, sorry, um, security overview. Yeah, let's go back into malicious IPs. Let's go back to, let's do that Windows exploit. I'll click on that. You see there's a whack load of them over here, right? Um, and uh, maybe this one here, the 103.224, maybe I go, oh, oh, no, that's okay. That's an okay address, right? Uh, that's whatever. I know it. I trust it, whatever. So you want to add an exception, right? So I, over here, you see add exception. When I click to here, it brings me back to my, my group panel to edit my group. And it'll come up and say, uh, add, uh, select or add a malicious IP address group to the addresses below. Now, it's only going to show me groups that are part of the malicious IP addresses. I'll show you that in a second, right? So if I select this, I go, okay, I want to add it to this group. If I select it and I go apply, it says this address has been successfully added as an exception. Let's go back into my groups inventory. Let's go back into um, groups. Let's go into that, uh, edit that malicious IP group. I go into here and let's go into, notice it says one exception IP. When I click on that, if I go to exception IP addresses, you see it's right there now. Right, so I could add it to that group. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, I don't know if I kind of like that. Let me get rid of this. Again, this one kind of just sits a little bit weird with me. I'm going to save it. So I got rid of that, okay? Now, I could actually go in and create another group. So let's do that exact same thing if I want to. Uh, let's go back into security. Let's go back into uh, malicious IP. Let's go back to that Windows exploit. Now, I'll pick that same one again, and I'll go add exception. Now, notice here I can select this and say apply. I, that's what I just demoed. But maybe I don't want to, maybe I don't want to mess with this default group. Maybe I want to create a group for exceptions. So I'll type in add group Steve's Steve's dash exceptions dash IPs, whatever. Notice, uh, notice the type is IP address only. I can go set, uh, at that point I can just, I could go in and manually add in IPs if I wanted to, right? I can go to set, exception IPs, whatever. I could, I could add this in, I could import it or whatever the case may be. I'm gonna cancel that. Uh, I'm just gonna save this. So I just saved the group. Now notice over here, um, now here's that address I wanted to add as an exception. So I selected my group Steve's IP, if I go apply, Notice it says it's been added as, as an exception. Great, where did it add it? I'll go back to my inventory, groups, and if I go back into Steve's exceptions, go edit, just see it's one exception there, right? 
and I'll go to exception IPs, and then away we go. Now I'm going to cancel this. I could add in more if I wanted to. I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to cancel this. Notice this group has that special icon that Steve's exceptions. Now, okay, so at this point, that's actually doing absolutely nothing, to be honest with you. Why? If, if you've been following along, I got to go into my security here, go into my distributed firewall, and then under my infrastructure here, uh, that, that uh, policy, and you have the two rules block and everything. Uh, notice here, if I click on the, the policy, uh, uh, disable all rules, add rule, add policy below. It's only going to let me put a policy below it and not above it. Okay. So if you wanted to do something kind of special or whatever the case may be, technically you could disable this, right? And then create a new policy below it and add in some of those rules. Like for example, I could add a policy, let's say Steve's allow list, whatever. Uh, then I'll make a new rule here add a rule I'll say Steve allow and then I'll say my source come on I'll say my source is that um, oh I didn't uh, oh yeah Steve exception there we go there's my source and my destination is any 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 and I'm gonna allow it and I can create another rule if I want to add rule again whatever Steve allow to whatever uh, instead of my source being that group it could, the destination can be that group and my source could be any Steve's exception if I go and I apply that uh, then any any allow and I could publish it so now I'm gonna allow that to go through and I could actually create rules underneath it malicious IPs to block it if I want to almost six and a half one half dozen to be honest with you uh, a couple of things you might notice here there's uh, these exclamation points if I hover over that it's not recommend not recommended action to uh, to allow for a rule containing malicious IPs so it knows that this group is based on malicious IPs so it's kind of suggesting that you know this might not be a good idea so um, so anyways, uh, I'm just going to delete that. It's probably, let's, uh, let's delete the policy and publish. It's probably just easier, let's re-enable these rules here. Come on, re-enable it. It's probably just, just as easy to create that exception and apply it to the default group. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But you do have the abilities, if you want to, again, go into inventory groups you do have the ability to create your own groups based on malicious IPs if you wanted to right so if I say over here is I'm just creating a normal group here if I go IP addresses only notice for here sorry about that folks notice IP address only there goes my dog um, I can say it's malicious IPs and it can pre it can add predefined IPs in other words it's going to import those bad IPs and then I can add in exceptions so you have that flexibility whether you want to or not I'm going to cancel all that but technically speaking you really don't have to so kind of cool thing um, you can actually again uh, this is enabled by default in, in, in new deployments of version 4 it's um, you have to manually enable it on any upgrades okay so if you upgrade from version 3 to version 4 you have to manually uh, enable it uh, that's basically it short and sweet hopefully that was short and sweet uh, thanks very much for sticking around hit that subscribe button I would really appreciate it without subscribers there's no content okay so uh, by subscribing it actually helps me uh, build uh, more uh, more content and whatnot uh, thanks again, and I'm going to have some new videos coming out on vSphere and Site Recovery Manager. I'm working on all those, so it'll be a whole library stuff. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.